Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Weekly Wise. We are so happy that you're here with us tonight, and we are excited to get started. So to begin with, I'm going to give you a little introduction about what Weekly Wise is all about. So it all started about three, four months ago, something like that, um, when we had this crazy thing in our house called Ben and Jerry's Free Cone Day. And we had 1,200 people eating ice cream in our front yard, and it was a total crisis. And soon after that, we were talking and thinking, you know, in the household, what do we do with all our leftover ice cream? So we thought, okay, we want to combine something with the business and the ice cream, and weekly wise. And my sister-in-law was here at the time, and we were going back and forth saying, well, we want to do something where it's not the same message every single week because, you know, we're going to run out of those friends who haven't heard our message and um, get really old. We wanted to have something to where we could talk about our business and offer new and interesting material every week, something that's going to really bless people's lives. So that is why we created Weekly Wise as it is. And so each week we have a different speaker come and present for the first half hour. And then we have a small introduction to our business so that people can just learn what that's all about. And then follow up can happen after that for those who are interested in learning more. And then, of course, there's free ice cream at the end. So um, we have an online audience. Welcome to you. We're glad you are here. And with that, I'm going to introduce tonight's speaker. And i got to tell you, I am so excited for the speaker tonight. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a background about my experience with my good friend Deanna. So I met Deanna when, I, I think, as far as I remember, when her oldest son, who's now almost 10. Maybe 11. Oh, almost 11. He's already 10. Yeah. Uh, he was two, I think. And she was pregnant with the next baby. And I was his teacher in church as a two-year-old. Um, since that time, we've had so many fun times together. We've played together, we've had sleepovers together. I love sleepovers <laughs> with very many people. And she's helped us in our business, and we've done seminars and trainings together. I've led a book group that she participated in. She taught a class that I gladly participated in. We did church things and fun things and business things and life-changing things together, really. And from all that, I was thinking, well, what do I want to say about Deanna? And the experience that I thought of was a time a few years ago, I don't remember exactly what it was, when we were catching up, what are you up to in your life? And she told us, I don't know if I remember all the details right, but she and her husband, Mike, were had a whole month, I think it was in June or something, that they were getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning or something every day. And... During that time, she was connecting with God and finding out answers for what her work to do. And I was so inspired. And out of that time, I believe, Deanna can correct me if I'm wrong, out of that time, her class was created that really has been a life changer for me and for others. And so when Deanna talks about finding answers and getting past the point where we don't know, no, that's because she knows how to get past I don't know. And so with that, we all help you welcome Deanna Rowan. Thank you so much, Bonnie. I just want to start by thanking Matt and Bonnie for this opportunity. Every time we interact, my life is blessed. And that is not an exaggeration. And in preparing for this to um, speak here, I thought this is about starting with why. I mean, it's why. So I got the book, Starting With Why. And what an awesome book. I'm not all the way done with it, but what a way to help me gain clarity on why I do what I do. So I'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, but first of all, do any of you struggle with ever, I don't know, did that ever come up in your head? It, it yeah. does for me. Would you like to know? Yeah. That's right. Um, well, so 
I love, I, I thrive on helping people find answers, their own answers. I believe, this is my why, because you were not made from a cookie cutter. You didn't come from a cookie cutter. You are a unique individual, and so your answers are going to be unique, and they are going to come in a personal way. They will probably be different answers than your neighbor's answers. Because they're your answers, because you were not made from a cookie cutter. So that is kind of what I boiled everything down to, is we're just not made from cookie cutters. And in my business, I am a financial planner, and I help people to um, make a financial plan, and especially what I'm interested in is helping them to um, create a, a firm foundation for that plan. And a firm foundation in finances is security, feeling of security. Security starts inside, and then it moves outside. So my second why would be, because security is inside of you. It's really inside of you, and it's something that you work on that way. Um, so let's get started. So I'm a teacher, and I'm a trained, certified financial planner, although I'm a little gone rogue as far as financial <laughs> planners go. I just kind of have rejected the traditional, what we teach everyone. For 15 years, I taught that, and I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a bunch of fear. I saw a bunch of, I don't know, but you're smart, and you've got all the things behind your name, so I'm just going to do what you say. And then, as there's ups and downs in the market, then those people come in and they're like, what? And it's because they don't know. They don't know why they're invested in what they're in. They don't know what they what is right for them? What's the personal thing for them? And um, because of all that fear I saw, because I saw people run out of money during those years, I was in financial you know, investment planning, I would say, from 1999 to about 2011. And that's with mutual funds and annuities and all of the traditional things that people tell you to get right into. Um, but I saw... I met with hundreds of people and worked with them, and um, I saw people in retirement who weren't prepared. I thought, there's got to be a better way, right? There's got to be a better way. And so I started off, um, I, left, I left my employer, and I started to look for better ways. And I started to ask the question, why and what, and how do you know what is right? Um, and what, so, so the first thing I want to talk about is the big, hairy, scary bully. You know what the big, hairy, scary bully is? Here, here. Those three words, I don't know. They seem so unassuming, <laughs> right? So small. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I realized that they were literally paralyzing me. Those words, I don't know. I just teach people what I was taught because that's got to be the smartest thing. I mean, that's right, right? I mean, this is, I went to school for a long time to learn this. <laughs> um, those words are paralyzing words. I don't know. And I realized, and this is my first advice to you, is to start keeping track of how many times I don't know enters your head during a day. Because... Um, it will paralyze you. It will stop you from uh, achieving your goals and receiving your dreams. It will make you feel like you're no good and you just don't have a clue in life. Really, it's, would you say that's a problem? Yeah, I think it's a big problem. And I think that uh, probably, well, a huge percentage of people are bullied by that phrase, I don't know. So tonight, I want to give you some tools and some answers and really some practical things that have helped me incredibly to overcome those words. I don't know. The first one I already gave you, it's just to recognize how often that's going through your head. It would go through my head on every single subject. 
uh, of the day. Something with my children. What should I do next in my career? Um, what should I have for dinner? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Don't flavor of ice cream. <laughs> right. He asked me what's my favorite flavor, Ben and Jerry's. I like them all. Because <laughs> I've changed my vocabulary. That's what you first thing you need to do. You need to change your thought vocabulary. I will tell you, I am a very religious person. I pray a lot. And so for me, my way of overcoming that was I created a sentence. That I just started fighting that bully back with. And every time I recognized that come into my head, I don't know, I would simply say to myself, and if I was alone, I'd even say it out loud, I do know because the Spirit tells me what to do next. That was my fighting back sentence. And that was something I could really put my faith in because I do believe in God and I do believe He cares about me. And that he will guide me if I reach out for him to do so. So I would encourage you to find your own sentence. If you are a believer like I am and that sentence works for you, just write it down and start saying it. If you are not, um, then I would encourage you to say something else. Um, and I wrote a couple down. But let's, maybe let's work some together. I do know, or I can find the answer. Right? That would be something you could say. Um, whatever you say, you've got to believe that that's true. You have to convince your brain, because you are up against a bully. And you have to fight that bully. And it's a serious fight. And it's going to take practice, and you have to keep practicing. Another thing that I did was I got a... I got two journals, and I would write all of my negative thoughts in one journal. Things, anything that subtracted from who I am, or made me feel like I didn't know what to do or how to do things, I would write those thoughts in that journal. And in the other journal, I would write anything inspirational that came to me. A thought of gratitude, I would write it down. An answer that I got from reading a book, from talking to a person, from just a thought that I had, I would write those answers down and I would write down accomplishments. Anything you accomplish during the day that is a positive thing, write it down. Do you know, can you guess why I'm telling you to do this? Why would I, why would I suggest that? You get more aware of what's going on in your head. And that helps because you can fight the point better if you can see them. You do get more aware. You do. Any other ideas? And that's half of it. Because you've done it and it served you well. Because <laughs> I've done it. That's right. I've done it and it served me well. And I know that it worked. You have to prove to yourself not just that you're having the thoughts, and that's what it does. It proves to you how big the bully is, like what you're really fighting. The other thing that the positive one proves to you is you are capable of finding answers. You are capable of doing good things and creating things. I have another one I like to say is that the answers are inside of me. I know God works with me, and I know that I know things, too. I just have to look inside and find answers inside of me. Okay, I love that. That takes me, actually, to my next point. And that is... That we did not come from cookie cutters, but we are just like a, uh, what do you call these these days? It's a boot box because I'm from the 80s. <laughs> 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 yeah. This this stereo radio CD player, it, um, it it is a receiver, isn't it? Doesn't it come with a receiver in it? And... Um, each one of us come with a receiver in us. And I want you to think of yourself for just a moment as though you are, you know, a receiver. Because it's true, actually. <laughs> um, and this is plugged in. We're plugged in if we get up and start the day every day, right? Would you agree with that? We're plugged in. If we're awake and working, eating. 
Um, and then we can even uh, turn it on, looking for, you know, um, and we could say any action that you take is turning turning yourself on, okay, to, to receive. Okay, so I just want you to hear how beautiful this is. Isn't that great? Not really, right? The cool thing about that is that through that static, you can actually hear a little bit, right? Would you like to hear it more clearly? Yeah. Sometimes when we reach out and we're looking for answers to things that we don't know, we do reach out. We do maybe read a book or say a prayer or start doing some sort of action, but there's still not clarity coming to us. And so what do you think causes the... That is way too here for my presentation. <laughs> so what do you think causes the static in our personal lives? Our own uncertainty. Our own uncertainty. Daily life. <laughs> Bad things happen, right? Self-talk. In our daily life, too, our busy. It's like static. There's just so much noise and so much busy attracting our attention and distracting our attention. That's a big one, isn't it? Any other ideas? We're not tuned to listen. I mean, radio, you have to be, get out the right frequency or whatever. It is I'm not very technical on that kind of thing. But you have, to have, you have to be tuned, correct? You're dialed in. Dial you in. have to be tuned and dialed in. So how do we do that in this machine? There's a knob. <laughs> we have to change the frequency that it's tuned to, right? We, we press that button, and it changes little bit by little bit the frequency. And as you go through those, you'll hear more static sometimes, right? Sometimes less static. Then you'll come into a clear station. And it could be the right station that you want, or it could be the wrong station, even though it's coming very clearly. So learning to distinguish those is pretty important. Um, I think another big one that causes a lot of static, a lot of I don't know, is concern for what other people will think of what you do. Or fear of failing. What if I try that and it just I fall flat on my face? I'll look horrible in front of everyone. Um, so if you think about each one of those things that cause the static, you could really work on any of those things to help take the static away, right? Um, and there's just a few things that I wanted to share tonight. Um, the other thing I want to point out about this thing is it doesn't just have a receiver, but this actually came tonight with some beautiful music already inside of it. And I feel like that's really an important thing about each one of us is we have a lot of knowledge inside of us. It's been scientifically proven that every single thing, even they can prove that in the womb, you have memory. That is in you. You have memory from the womb through every minute you have lived. And I believe that you came here, you were born with plenty already inside of your heart and your soul. Knowledge, talents, opinions even, uh, ways of, of attacking the world, right? We are all so different. So there's also great answers already inside of us. But the secret is getting to those answers. Because you see, in this life, so many things happen to us, bad things happen that we tend to pad ourselves, almost protect ourselves, and especially those things that are so deep in our heart that mean so much to us, we almost put layers of protection over them till we ourselves, our minds, think that we can't access them. But really, when I say to say to yourself, I do know because the spirit tells me what to do next, it could be my spirit tells me what to do next, or my spirit can receive from God what to do next, um, depending on the question, right? So, um, so how do you access that? 
I, when I discovered how paralyzed I was by this I don't know, and I will tell you, this has been a, a process for me that has taken, I'm four years into this process, and I feel so much more open and awake to who I truly am and what I really want, and I'm comfortable with where I am and who I want to be. I'm a financial advisor who lives in a townhouse with four children. It's a pretty small place. But do you know what? I've come to an understanding of who I am and what my priorities are. We spend more than a really nice house payment every month to send our children to a private school. Because that private school embodies everything that I would love to teach my children, but I feel incapable of doing. And it surrounds my children with those kind of people also. And most of the people who go to that school live in nice, big, huge homes. But you don't have to. I don't have to. The other reason that I live in a small home is because I really would rather be a mother than work. And so I work enough to make sure that we're eating, <laughs> that we can stay in our home. But I really want it to be my husband, who um, some of you here know, but he had a major stroke before we were married, and I knew that I would be providing for a while. I've come to a very comfortable place with acting upon the answers I receive. And when I receive an answer that says, it's time to pull back on the income you're making, I do that. And I've decided I'm comfortable with it. And it took me a while to get there because financial advisors are supposed to look rich and they're supposed to have all this stuff and they're supposed to drive a fancy car and if they're not, they must not be any good. Right? But when I learn and this is why I would encourage you to go forward with some of these things that I invite you to do is that when you open up to who you really are and what's really important for you and making the choices that are going to be the most prosperous path for you life is so much more peaceful and it really doesn't matter anymore what everybody thinks because it's where you're supposed to be for what you want, right? I have desires of what I want out of this life and what I want for my husband and my children and all of that plays into what I do. And one of the things that I had a really hard time getting past was people say, Tina, you're so talented. You can make so much money. I'm like, why don't you just go out and be the provider and let your husband raise your children? Well, my husband would not feel fulfilled at home raising our children. That's not how he's wired. So, anyway, that's a lot more about me than I intended to share. So, one of the things that has been incredibly, incredibly helpful to me is learning how to connect with myself and with God through prayer. I'm talking real prayer where, you know, I used to wonder, can you really can you really stay in prayer and like receive answers right then? And how does that happen? Because it just didn't seem doable to me. But I have found for me the answer is in writing. And this may sound really strange to you, and you may I hope you try it. <laughs> Your brain may tell you, no way. But I want to tell you that if you will try this, if you will put it to the test and you'll keep practicing it, you will have some amazing experiences. Because you can discover what's inside of you, if not what God has to say to you. So the way that you do this form of prayer is you you get up early in the morning. And I'm talking like when the birds are just waking up. Like 4 a.m. Why? Well, because that's when the world is the quietest. It's the most peaceful. The birds are just waking up. It's still dark. So nobody's awake in your home usually, and um, it's a time when you can just sit in the quiet, and your soul is also pretty at rest because you've probably been sleeping for several hours already, and so you're in a state 
of relaxation, which is really important when you need to be still and be quiet. Because I want to say that finding answers takes still and quiet. And when you do the still and quiet, you receive some answers, but then you get up and you go exercising, or you just go throughout your day, and you'll pick up a lot more answers than if you're not doing the quiet. So you get up early at a time when it's very quiet, okay? And then you sit with a pencil or at your computer, whatever is most comfortable for you. And you, and I do this in the form of prayer. I believe that if you're not a believer, if you're not religious, you can just do this just for, for yourself. You don't have to address God. Okay? You can address yourself, and I think you'll still get good answers. So I say, Dear Heavenly Father, and I just start writing to him, writing everything that comes to my head, all of my frustrations, all of my problems, everything that's getting in my way, all of my questions, all of my feelings about it, just unload. Just, and you know, when I think of praying, that's not what I think of. But this, like I said, it's a deeper, like to me, this is true prayer. <laughs> um, because I just start unloading it. I don't understand why. I'm not sure what to do next on this. All of the I don't knows, let them all spill out and give detail about how it's stopping you and what is causing to happen in your life and everything that's happening. Okay? Just completely express yourself. And I find. I am a verbal person, I will say that. But oftentimes, that part of my prayer goes on for two or three pages. But I find that as I am going through that, just learning to express yourself and what's wrong and what you don't know, actually that exercise in itself will start to bring clarity for you. And oftentimes, I mean, express everything, not just negativity, okay? Talk about what you're grateful for. What's happening right in your life? What is bringing you joy? Where do you feel like you're really succeeding? Those things are very important, too. Um, and then when you feel like you've just all talked out, <laughs> you can't write anymore. Um, and if you sit there and nothing is coming to you, just sit there and write every thought. If the thought is, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to write. You write every thought that you have. And even if your thoughts are going in weird directions, like if you have a thought here and then all of a sudden in the middle of it a thought comes here, you, you begin on the new thought. You just follow your thoughts because of everything, the map that's inside of you. There is a map inside of you. And the way that our brains work, there is pathways everywhere. And if you will just follow the pathway that your mind is giving you as to the problem, you're gonna, you might skip around, but you will find that oftentimes that map, that path, takes you to the root of the problem or to an answer. So then after you're all done expressing yourself, then the next step. This is the step that takes faith and believing. You then say, and you end, you know, I, may, I end in the name of Jesus Christ, and I even type that, amen. And then the next thing I write is, dear Deanna, you would write, dear Bonnie, dear Christy, you put your own name in there, okay? And then you write every thought that comes to your mind. And I just want to share from the deepest part of my heart that answers come that way. Clarity comes. The first time I did it, honestly, I was shocked at my experience. Because there it was, proof in front of me that God can talk to me. I just received an answer immediately <laughs> from my prayer, right? And, um, I just really want to encourage you to do that, to have that experience, and to that that exercise will 
help you connect with yourself and also and, and you will do it on a, even on a regular basis however much however much you desire however much it, 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 you need it um, I think you'll find that answers continue to come any questions about that? do you keep the stuff you yes yes I keep the stuff I wrote and what's incredibly insightful and creates more proof is that you can go back then to four years ago and read what you were struggling with and what you wanted. I mean, that's another thing that I read in that prayer is, this is what I really want. I mean, sometimes in those prayers is what I discover what I want. Um, and then you read the answers and you, then you have the history to see what happened from that. It's an incredibly beautiful thing and it has increased my faith that I really do have a mission. And that I can just relax and live my life happily and have faith that I'm completing my mission. I used to worry. I know you have great things for me to do, Heavenly Father. If you just tell me what they are, I'll get right on that. I really want to fulfill my mission. Like, that's the thing I want to do the very most of my life. If I just knew. I don't know. Like, that was my major frustration. <laughs> is that, I don't know. Um, but... To really discover it, you kind of have to relax and open up to answers and be okay with who you are. I told you some of the things I had to become okay with. I had to recognize and be like, I don't need to be embarrassed of where I live. I just need to be it, accept it. Because people don't judge you. I mean, when I go out and do business calls, they don't know where I live usually. But it used to be written all over me, right? But now I own it. It's good. And it makes a big difference in how I talk to people. Okay, the last thing I want to share with you. So, so there's the saying, just create a sentence that you can begin to fight that with. There's beginning to record your negative thoughts and your positive thoughts and your positive experiences. And then there's the prayer, that form of prayer I just shared with you. The next thing I would like to um, share with you is that a lot of times we don't know because we don't have clarity on what we really want. Who was it that said, was it Mark Twain that said, I can help anybody get where they want to go. I just have a hard time finding somebody who knows what they want. Yeah. What a great quote because I really think. So many of us are just wandering around, just living life, but we don't really know what we want. And um, if you don't know what you want, how are you going to find it, right? Um, I was going to draw pictures for you and write things down. I haven't done that. <laughs> um, so this, this other thing is to gain clarity. And really, I think it works with two people the very best because um, it just helps it. But you can do it with yourself, too. So the way you do this is uh, it's an exercise to gain clarity. And you start a timer. Um, Ten minutes is probably a good time because that will push you a little bit. Set a timer for ten minutes, and one person just asks questions. What do you want? Tell me what you want. And you can choose to do this exercise just in general in your life. I think it's more, um, and maybe that's where you need to start. It becomes really meaningful when you choose an area of your life and you focus on that area and what you want to, what, what do you want there? What do you want to have happen in your business? What do I want in my business? Um, so one person just says, tell me what you want. And then you try to tell them. You just begin, just try and I'll tell you, you really are up against a bully because my brain, what my brain said to me in the beginning was, you don't know what you want. And you don't know what else is going to happen. So how can you even create a picture? Because you don't know that. You can say that's going to happen, but you don't have any clue. And it would just shut me down every time. I couldn't even create a picture of my future because you don't know that. Well, who cares if you don't know that? Get into play mode and create what you want 
And then you'll be surprised what begins to happen. And maybe it doesn't happen just exactly how you pictured it, but if you never get the picture, you're never going to get on the way there, right? As you go forward, your vision, your picture of what you want will begin to come together and it will change because you change, right? But get past the, I don't know what's going to happen, so I can't do that. Just start Start describing what you want, how you want things to look. And the person who's asking the questions is you saying, that's good. And what else do you want? Tell me more. That's really great. Tell me more. The person asking questions is not allowed to direct, you know, not allowed to make comments except for, that's really good. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. For 10 minutes. It's quite an exercise. <laughs> That's the last thing that I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope that these things, I hope you feel these are valuable. I know that if you will put them into place, they will begin bringing you answers. So I have a challenge to leave with you. I, uh, I challenge you to choose one of these things that you are going to act upon. Um, starting to say that thought to yourself, the prayer, the interview to gain clarity um, so that you can beat your bully. And I'm here to tell you, you can do it because I did it. And I'm nobody special. I mean, you know, I'm somebody special, but everybody here is somebody <laughs> special. <laughs> so um, I, if you are interested in talking to me further about what I do in financial planning or if you're interested in my class, my class is The Wise Steward. And what I find is that you come to these things and you feel so inspired and you go home and you're going to do them and then they don't happen. And my class is designed to be a personal experience. It's a four-week study. And you can you can contact me for details. I'll just put down here uh, my email address. It's Deanna at Be the Wise Steward. Dot. Thank you so much for coming today. Deanna, thank you so much. I have about 10 things in mind that I want to say about what Deanna said. I'm going to try and hold it down the way for you. But I'm just going to start off by telling you I'm going to take Deanna's challenge. The one that really stood, stood out to me was that first one about catching an item know. And so I'm committing that before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to write up on my whiteboard in my bedroom my sentence that's going to help me write up the item notes because I think that is a great next step for me in overcoming this fully. Another thing I want to put in is just one more plug for this advice to her class. I just told Deanna when I hung out with her recently, I took Weiss to her probably two and a half years ago. Did we do it? Something like that. And there were just a few little things that I didn't get done. A few more assignments that have been bugging me ever since. And just recently I said, I'm just getting it done. So this morning I was up doing my wise steward homework. And I have gotten some really, really cool and amazing insights and answers from doing the exercises that she recommends. Getting up early and doing it. Another thing I just want to put in my plug for, be a second witness to what Deanna said about getting the answers. Each person has their own journey, like she said. And for me, a lot of the time, well, way back when, before I was as hard into my journey and really getting clear and getting the clarity I needed, I used to have this belief that getting answers to prayers was this big long process. This is how it had to look. Everyone had to be quiet in the house. No kids making any noise. You had to make sure you weren't too tired and you weren't too hungry. And when you pray, make sure you start with all the things you're grateful for. Because if you don't, the Holy Ghost won't be able to come and talk to you. And so if you don't have time or you're in the, not in the right frame of mind to do this whole big process, tough luck, you're not going to get any help. And that actually didn't help me all that. I mean, sometimes I go through the whole process, and then I may or may not get answers, and then I change that. Now I believe that God wants to give me answers, 
and that I can tune in quickly and easily. And while I've written for to get answers many, many times, I haven't done it exactly the way Anna just said. I think it would help. I think I would get more clarity. For me, it looks more like this. One day, I'm frustrated about something. Usually, my quest for answers starts with frustration. I don't like this in my life. I want to change how this goes. And so then I think, okay, what do I need to know to change this? And then I usually wait till the next morning when I am a little more still and I ask one or two or three questions and I just do those. And because I used to think it was this huge long process, then my next tendency was to think, well, I have to get answers about everything in my life and I, I can't do this unless I have two hours to write. And that's a fantastic way when you have two hours to write. It's also great if you have one question and 10 minutes. Or if you have one little shift you want to make in your life, and you want to make it now, because the kid's bugging you right now, and you need to figure out what to do, and you don't want to do it the same dumb way you've done it a hundred times before that didn't help. And so you just really quick, help me, I need to do something good work right now. Those kinds of answers can come. There's a lot of ways we can get answers. I still also want to encourage you to do the writing, because it makes a profound impact and you seek answers and get answers that way. The next invitation I'm going to give you is to come to our Weekly Wise next week, which we usually stay at the very end, so that's probably like, what is Mommy doing going all road? Yeah. But <laughs> next week, I'm actually going to present, and some of the things that Deanna said, in my opinion, were a really great introduction for what I'm going to say to you. We really could have just been a series. <laughs> Because of some of the things that I have in mind, specifically I want to talk about that situation that Deanna talked about. When you look at the future and you don't know what it looks like, and so you're scared, or you're uncertain, or you feel like you can't, you're immobile, you can't get there. I want to talk about ways to look at the present and ways to look at the future so that you can be happy with where you are and working towards where you are. I don't mean happy with where you are and like don't change anything because everything's perfect, but to be happy right now where you are and have the vision of where you're going. Because you, you wouldn't be happy if you were where you are right now 10 years from now. Because you're not supposed to still be here 10 years from now. You want to go change. You want to get to that next place. That's what I'm going to be talking about. And doing it in a way that's more happy and relaxed and trusting rather than the fear. So if you liked what you heard, I will not be Deanna. I cannot be Deanna. But I will be me presenting that kind of thing. Please come and join us again next week. Same time, same place. Same Ben and Jerry's with me presenting it instead of Deanna. So now we're going to change gears just a little bit and talk about our business and talk about more resources and tools. What Deanna shared with us tonight are resources and tools. What this business offers are more resources and tools, and they're things that have made a powerful impact on our lives. So that's what I'm going to share with you. I promise I would not participate in a business if it wasn't a life changing, impacting business, because to me it just wouldn't be worth the time and the effort and the money and the especially interruption to family life, but it's sometimes really what it provides for us is creating a better family because of what it's offering to us. So I'm not going to share a bit about that. First, I gotta just re-emphasize for my own way. My head's getting chuckled. Uh, I'm just gonna just, just, <laughs> uh, just re-emphasize uh, what the advice to report as well. That's it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. So thank you. Thank you for, for sharing. What resonated with me this time from what she shared, I have done the get up at, well, actually, I usually do it at 3 a.m. when I do that. I uh, got up at 3 a.m. and done that writing activity, and it's been amazing every time, and I haven't done it for a while. And while you spoke of that, it just, I felt it. You know, I was like, okay, this is something we're going to do again. So this week, why do we do it on Saturday? Yeah. Thanks. 
accountability partner, they call it a piece. Um, so she's a good one. She's cute. <laughs> so, as she said, I'm going to be talking about our business. Wait, what's the commitment? Oh, sorry, that's it. Uh, I'm going to, one morning this week, I'm going to wake up at 3 and do that. Do that right. Thanks. Uh, so, as she said, we, we have a business, which means I'm up here doing what? Selling something. Right? That's what I'm here to do. And I'm proud to be doing it. Because, quite frankly, like she said, what we have to offer is immensely important. Enough that there's something that has so much value that we want to offer it and actually ask for value in return. What's that value? At the same time, I want to be clear. I want to ask you, please do not buy what I'm selling. Okay? I've had that experience and it's not a great one for me or for anyone involved. So I would ask you to choose deliberately if you want to sell yourself from what I'm going to be talking about and sharing. Fair enough? All right. Uh, do we, before I jump into what we have to offer, I want you to invite you to close your eyes for a moment, if, if you prefer to. If you don't like doing the close your eyes thing, you don't have to. And think back to when you were a child, and the first time someone asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Can you bring to mind the first time that happened? And imagine how think about how, how old you are. We really want you to get in this experience you know, for how old you were. And can you remember what you responded? What you said. Now I'm gonna take a wild guess that when a person who asked you that question didn't mean what they said. When they said what do you want to be when you grow up, they really meant what do you want to do? You grow up, and that's probably the question you answer. So now I stay there, think of yourself as that child, not who you are now, but as five or four or six or twelve years old or whatever, whatever it is. And I want to ask you the question to, to your child self: What do you want to be? What is your child? Most likely, it will be in something related to feeling. Most of what we do in our lives, we're searching for, are certain feelings. We want to feel great, happy, ecstatic, awesome, thrilled to be alive. That's what we're looking for. When people talk about having lots of money, why? So I can get stuff? Sure. So I can have experiences? More likely. So I can have feelings. Feelings of security, like Deanna mentioned. Having that foundation. That's what we're after. That's what we need. Well, I believe that what the, our, our feelings and our emotions and all of that, we can have all that we seek. And it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessitate large income or a lot of the things that the world likes to throw at us as what you need to be happy or what you need to be what you want to be. It comes from here. It comes from the real estate in our minds. If we want to change the results that we are having, guess where we gotta start changing? It's here. It's us. It's who we are. Right? And so what we share, what we talk about, is a service that helps us become the person we want to be. I, I don't have the technology right here for you to just pull it up. But what we have is a collection of mentors, of trainers, top-notch, world-class people who have taken their content of all aspects of life and put it in one vault online where you can log in and access videos, audios, PDFs, you name it, programs, courses, classes, whether it be on health, to, to change our physical health, whatever, you know, eating or exercise or things like that. Someone called Marcy Locke is one person that just comes up and talks about life. 
that has her content in there. She charges $150,000 to work with her personally for one year. $150,000 for a personal trainer. And she gets it because she's that good. She provides that kind of value for people. And she has put content in this vault. Uh, there are other people that are like Kevin Harrington, if you like Shark Tank, and our business team, like that kind of stuff. There's a lot of there's sales training, there's lots of different kinds of things. There's also part of my favorite content is mindset. Uh, a woman named Leslie Householder, she wrote a book called The Jack Rabbit Factor, it's one of her popular books. I love this woman. She When she talks, then she talks straight to my heart. I love what she had to say. Her content is in the small. So if you can imagine just waking up in the morning and saying, you know, I want to become a better person. I want to dedicate 15, 30 minutes every day to being a better person. You log on, you access whatever the content is, whatever area of your life you want to improve. There's a woman named Ann Webb who helps you create an ideal life vision. And that's part of why I asked you to do that exercise at the beginning. What is your child, when you were a child, and looking at the future, what was your ideal life vision? I kind of don't think I had a ton to do with what your job may have been. You know, I don't think you cared. So accessing all of this content, is there a price? Yes. It's $99 a month to access world class content every morning, every night, every time you want to develop yourself. My brother in law, Tony's brother, great guy, he says something I love. He says, love yourself and then to invest in yourself. And Warren Buffett, anyone heard of Warren Buffett? Yes. Singer, right? Yeah, singer, you see. Today you should hear him. Probably shouldn't. I don't know. I don't guess you know. <laughs> he uh, asked, uh, asked groups of college students, uh, at least on one occasion, I'm sure you've thought of more, how many of you feel you're worth at least $500,000? You personally. And people will raise their hand because it's like, how do you put a price on your person, right? That's the that makes sense, of course. So how many of you have a net worth, keep your hands up if you have a net worth of over $500,000? Well, all the college students put their hands up. So, then, why do you not take the time and the money and effort to invest in your greatest asset? That, that was for profits. So, if this interests you, if it piques your interest, then let's talk. We'll get in and actually show you a little bit. If you're online, you know, communicate with us through Facebook. We'll kind of give you a a little bit of, hey, this is what it really looks like. Because again, I'm, I do not buy what I'm selling. Choose and look into it if it's something you want to sell yourself. Because it does no good for you to pay $99, to pay $99 but there's no contract you can cancel any time. But it does no good to pay $99 to not use it. Right? You, you dedicate 15 to 30 minutes every day to be using this. To make it meaningful for you. So that's what we have to offer. And if that resonates with you, then by all means, let's have a conversation. We can even, while we're doing some Ben Jerry's, for those online, I'm sorry, come. I can't give you Ben Jerry's to the computer, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, but we'll, we'll put it up on the computer and you can look at it or something like that if you want to. Look around. Get it. So that, thank you. Appreciate it. And Dan, we got to get you some ice cream. <laughs> What kinds of, well, I don't want to go to the lanes for right now, but. Um, Should we just grab a pint of your pizza and then yeah. get to the your favorite? <laughs> so we always like to do, you know how they do uh, technology unboxing, so new products and stuff like that? <laughs> so we like to do that with the ice cream because it's hard. <laughs> There's really no other reason. And because when you open it up, I don't know. See, this is me and my ice cream. I love ice cream. You're an addict. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people love ice cream. I care about ice cream. <laughs> when you open it up, it's just... You're mostly tied. I am. 
Right. All right. You grabbed everything about the deck. Which since you like everything, probably good. Come on up. Here's your shovel. Can you get? Ben and Jerry sent that to us. It's pretty cool. Everything but that. A it says Ben and Jerry said it, right? Awesome. Yep. A collision of chocolate and vanilla ice creams mixed with peanut butter cups, fudge covered toffee pieces, white chocolatey chunks, and fudge covered almonds. Sounds good to me. You want to dig in? This is what y'all are missing. <laughs> Just because I mean like that. You kind of rubbed it in. Yeah. Michael did say today he wished he could come if it wasn't so far away. So <laughs> he's watching and he's especially thinking you're rude. <laughs> Sorry. It might be worth the trip. It is Ben and Jerry's. All right. Well, with that, thank you. Again, love to have you come next week with Bonnie. I'm especially partial. But I, I've heard her present before. She's really, really good. So with that, thank you. Let's go get some ice cream.